When I was a child, and I was raised in, in religious school, went through 12 years in religious school, and my greatest problem with religion and Christianity was the fact that this entity of wisdom called God was unable to figure a better way to solve his problem with this thing called sin than by killing people. I, right from the beginning, the first that I was ever able to understand or think I could understand, I was not able to accept that, was never able to accept. Why is that the only way that you can figure out to forgive somebody is by killing people. And, and you know, and as I grew older, and as I pondered these things, and I always have in my mind pondered these things, I thought to myself, if the Creator cannot figure out a better way than to use violence, maybe that's why all of the people on the earth also cannot figure out a better way than by using violence. So to settle all of the problems of the world, there's violence. But according to religion, I found that that's true because this thing called God also uses violence in order to settle his problem. He tortures to death a young man in order to settle the problem of sin. He then is planning uh, an Armageddon nuclear attack in order to settle the problem of the world. So that, to me, here I'm asked then by religion to love God. And I found myself in a position where not only I couldn't love him, I couldn't even like him. I really didn't like the guy. Because I figured, you know, he's a, isn't there a way you could sit down and talk to people? We were sitting in a Japanese restaurant the other night. And there's a little girl. She was a cute little thing, and she was waiting on us. And I said to her, what is your name? She said, my name, me. And then she looked at Joe and said, she, she. Him, he. And uh, I said, well, okay, you know, this is nice. <laughs> we had miso soup and tempura and teriyaki and all of this stuff. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, how come it was we're eating all of this stuff and bowing to one another and everybody's laughing in here and we go home and we have a Mitsubishi television set which is burned out. So while we're waiting to get that fixed, we have another TV to replace it, which is a Sony. <laughs> How come wasn't too long ago everybody was getting killed, dropping bombs on one another, and now, why is, what's, what happened? How come we couldn't watch, you know, and, and be nice to each other then, yet we got to kill each other? And it goes on and on and on. And, you know, there's no answer to it, you know? You drive a Volkswagen, and a few years ago, Hitler was running. So, there seems to be the fact that something has set a precedent that the only way to solve problems is violence. You know, if, if there's too many deer, all the deer are hungry. Well, what do we say? Let's all bring them food. No, let's shoot them. <laughs> let's extend the hunting season. We'll kill them all. That way we won't have so many. And that's always the way. But you see, if the God that you follow has a principle that the best way to solve problems is by killing people, then what are you going to do? And it's exactly what we do. So I searched this and, and I found, and I, and I told this God, I, I, I told him many times privately and I've said publicly, if this is true and you really killed this guy and you're going to kill everybody and you've done all of this warring, not only do I don't love you, I don't like you and I really don't want to be involved with you. And it puts me in a very precarious position. Because if it's really God and he's like that, I've had it. <laughs> really. You know, because who else are you going to find? You know, where's another God somewhere? You can say, well, you know, you're, nice. you're nicer, but this one here is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, 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 I've searched all of my life and I finally have found what I've tried to share with you, the answers that all of those things that you've heard about God killing people and the violence are not true. That's the greatest thing I can stand here and tell you. It is not so. Never happened. Never will happen. There is no supreme intelligence in the universe who can only kill people in order to settle his ego and to settle problems. One of the things that touched me 
was the fact of the Bible itself. And, and I don't know how many of you are aware that the Bible you have in your hand is only a fragment of the books that were written. I mean, it's, there's, what do you have, 60 in the Bible? There are thousands of books written. And only those books which equated with the doctrine of the church during the Middle Ages and the early times was allowed to be put into that which you call the Bible. There are many books which are not allowed. And the one, there's two, the Gospel of, uh, of Thomas, who was a disciple of Jesus, and the Acts of John. Written by John, the one that Jesus loved the most, and Thomas, who said, unless I see and feel, you know, I don't believe. And so, you know, when you begin to explore things other than what the church has allowed you to hear, you start to find different stories. In other words, the society that you live in, the culture, the traditions that you've lived in, have been deprived of hearing other stories that are not talking about a God who kills and, and fire and all of this kind of stuff. And yet, many of us do not know that these exist. If you can't find the Gospel of Thomas or the Acts of John, let me recommend to you, there's a little paperback book you can find in any bookstore called Occidental Mythology. And that's Occidental, spelled O-C-C-I-D-E-N-T-A-L. Occidental Mythology is written by Joseph Campbell. And it contains these uh, epics that I'm talking about because some of you may want to spend a little time in, in going into these things, you know. This is really, really amazing. But there was an ancient text written by John and Thomas. And the following story that I wanted you to look at with me is really astonishing. And it's written by the same John that according to the Bible, Jesus loved the best. And yet the amazing thing is, many of you have gone to church all of your life. And you've, and you've read Bibles, and you know, you've sung songs, you've sung Amazing Grace, and Just a Closer Walk with Thee, and you've done all of these things, yet amazingly you don't have any idea that these things exist. You only know what John wrote, what's in that book. You didn't know that he wrote something else. You only know what Thomas said is in that book. You didn't know that Thomas said something. You had no idea. Say. But yet I'm about to, to tell you something that's very strange to your ears and, and places, uh, places God in a different light altogether. When I think that that's very exciting. Here, here's a story that Jesus comes from the desert and you have in a boat John and James. James is Jesus' brother. And then if you have John who wrote the Revelation, and who was the one that Jesus loved the most. And you hear this voice from the shore, and he, he yells out to these guys in the boat, come on in here, I, I, I have need of you, I want to I talk to you, come on in here. And James looks out, and he says, John, who, what's that, who's that little kid? And John says, what do you mean a little kid? There's an old guy there, the old guy. It's a guy with a beard. He says, what are you trying to do? You went out in the boat too long. He says, a little kid. He said, well, I don't see any little kid. He said, I see an old guy. He said, I don't know what the heck he's talking about. He's yelling something. But he said, let's go in and find out. So they go in to the shore, and this Jesus helps them land the boat. And John says in the Acts of John, the guy was bald, but he had a thick beard. And James said, he was very young, and he had thick hair, and the beard was just starting to come in. Did you hear? Here, here, here's one said, he's a little kid. No, he's an old man. The other said, the guy's bald, but he's got a thick beard. The other guy says, the beard's just starting to come in. But boys, he got a head of hair. And you know what's being said here? This God, this Jesus, does not look the same and is not the same to all people. It depends on you. It depends totally on your perception. It doesn't mean that you can think of him as the Catholics think of him, or as the Baptists think of him, or as the Methodists think of him. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have to think of him as Christian. You see him totally different. You may see him as a big fat. You may see him as a wisp of smoke. You may see him as a butterfly. You may see him as an eagle. You may see him as a, as a gust of wind. You may see him in all different ways, but no two people will see him or understand him the same way. Huh? 
That's what's being said. Oh, he's an old man. Oh, he's a little kid. He's got a lot of hair. He's bald. He's got a beard. Now it's just starting to come in. How come he's standing right there, but they see him totally different? And, and basically, the problem with our lives and our religions is you've all come into church and you all stand up and you hear about the Jesus and you all said that you have to see him this way. Which way? The way the group says you must see him. Even though, you say, gee, I can't, I can't conceive of this. You're supposed to love him. How do I love him? I don't even know who he is. And John says, I watched him closely. I never saw him blink. And sometimes when he would hug me, his chest felt soft. Other times it was hard as stone. Sometimes when, when you have a relationship, even in meditation, you can slide right into nirvana and you can fly with the wings of an eagle. Other times you sit here and your mind is just distraught and your mind blanks you and just bangs away at you and won't let you enter into the thing. It doesn't make any sense. It all depends on you.